My dad used to take me to the library every weekend and I would check out a book on um, science and math mostly. Uh, I got my pick. The day that I checked out that book on uh, astronomy and astronauts, it, it was different for me. I remember the book. I remember what it looked like. I remember in the back of the book they taught me how to make an astrolabe. I built one out of a cardboard box. So that book was very important to me. The space uh, spark stayed with me and is still with me and, and that's what gets me up every morning to, to come into work. My name is Ginger Carrick. I am a flight director and I work at the Johnson Space Center. Growing up in El Paso, I would go and, and play football and, and um, baseball. And then there was a reservoir, and we would go get uh, tadpoles. The frogs would come. It only rained a couple times in El Paso every year. So my dad and I would go down there with huge buckets and save the tadpoles. And we would bring them to the backyard and set up. He set up terrariums in the backyard, and then I'd inspect them. And when they had you know, their little legs, they went into tank number two, which was half water and half land, so they could practice. And then once the tails went away, I'd set them free in the backyard. I remember my mother looking out the window going, oh. but my dad was really proud that that was his girl out there, you know, raising the tadpoles. Losing my father was a, a very uh, traumatic point in my life. I, I watched it happen. He had a heart attack at his work and uh, it, it changes your perspective as an 11-year-old. As my mom, I leaned on my mom very heavily. She has been a, a, a tremendous influence on my life, and my mom was the, the pillar um, that kept the family together. I had two other sisters and one brother, and she is just a, a, a strong woman, a loving woman, and I could not have made it this far without her. When I was about 13, I wrote to NASA and said I wanted to work here. And I got this cute little letter back that said stay in school, study math and science, but, but I took it literally. So when I was in high school, I took a lot of honors science classes, a lot of honors math classes. Um, they also encouraged me to uh, participate in uh, team activities, whether it be team sports or other uh, clubs and uh, volunteer organizations. So I did that as well in high school. Um, and then in uh, college, I uh, chose to major in physics because I thought it would be difficult, uh, and it was. When I was notified that I was going to come in and do interviews for astronaut candidacy, I was beyond words excited. That had been a dream of mine for, for a number of years. I'd met the minimum requirements. Um, first person I called, of course, was my mother. I was excited. When I was notified that I, I was not, no longer a candidate for astronaut, um, I, I was devastated. Uh, I was informed that I had kidney stones, which was at the time a lifetime disqualification from the program. So I went home and did what anybody would do, cry and be completely miserable for a few days. And then I told myself, you know, you need to snap yourself out of this. What other ways can you contribute to the program? And uh, I thought, well, if I can't be an astronaut and go into space, at least I could teach astronauts and each one of them can carry a little bit of what I taught them into space and it was just that change in perspective that allowed me to you know wipe the tears and, and get back up and come back into work and that was all it took. My career at NASA has been a series of events um, that opportunities that have just popped up and each opportunity has led me to a new opportunity. Uh, when I was an instructor for the astronauts um, I, I ran into um, William Shepard and, and I got another opportunity to become a different type of instructor for that crew. If the experience that I gained doing that opened up the door to become the first non-astronaut Capcom. Then the Capcom sits right next to the flight director in mission control, so I got to watch the flight director and I think, oh, I would like to do that job. So now I'm sitting here as a flight director wondering what is going to come for me next. And uh, to be perfectly honest, I, I don't know. Life throws some, some pretty tough curveballs at you, and if you try to tackle those alone, sometimes it takes you a lot longer to get to where you need to go. Um, and I have been blessed with having a you know, great family and a number of great mentors throughout my life that have helped carry me through. So those are, those are lessons that I have learned.